Welcome to the Nye Hangar. We're just doing a quick tour of the uh, Isotoft TV3117. It's a free shaft gas turbine helicopter engine used in Russian military helicopters. It's a beautiful piece. Uh, these are rated at 2000 or 2200 horsepower. It's very nicely built. It's very similar to a General Electric T58 in the basic layout and the components. Uh, more powerful and more sophisticated in some ways. The fuel control is much more sophisticated. It's like very sophisticated. It has three controls for uh, throttle settings, governor settings. I'm not sure what each of them are, but they all have nice uh, indicators on them that show the position and the angle. And the variable inlet guide vanes also have indicators as well. One here, and there's another one up in here. There's a oil pump on the bottom, and there's a customer air bleed. Has a flow divider on the bottom, similar to what a T58 has. And there's the thermocouple connections. The thermocouples are here. And uh, there's uh, electrical speed feedback for the power turbine. And this is the accessory gearbox for the power turbine. And there's a flexi shaft that rotates in here for uh, N2 feedback. So this uh, has got a lovely spline output shaft. There's a flange to support the engine here. And then there's a nice spline shaft, output shaft in there. I believe the RPM of that shaft is 15,000. It's about two inches in diameter, 50 millimeters. And the power turbine casing can be rotated any direction you like, as far as I know. It just has another uh, bolt pattern here, different from a T58, which is a real pain to turn. This engine, you can rotate that exhaust straight up with no problem at all. It's got some uh, cute little blankets on here to protect you from burning your arms on the customer air bleed as a discharge at the front. I'm not sure what goes here, but it comes with a, a cover and a connection to support the cannon plug. It, it may be uh, maybe the uh, N1 speed tachometer. And the fuel boost pump is right here, and it has a little turbine wheel in it. You can even see that little turbine turns when you rotate the engine over. There's a nameplate on the front of the engine. And I believe this is an accessory uh, generator mounting pad. I'm not too sure. Pretty much everything mounts with a V-band clamp. The air starter mounts with a V-band clamp and even the uh, fuel control unit mounts with a V-band clamp. Variable inlet guide vanes and uh, variable stator vanes. Very similar to a T58. Very nicely done. There's some electrical connections. There's the uh, ignition exciter box, another customer air bleed. So we're protecting the spline shaft here with the uh, rubber piece so we can turn it with a pair of vice grips. It's on a ratchet and if I just turn this, let this demonstrate. And it coasts nicely. Everything looks really good inside, as far as I can see. It's a little bit dirty, it needs a good wash. You'll even see some, uh, some geometry on those uh, variable inlet guide vanes. I wonder whether they are like vortex generators to, to uh, maintain attachment to prevent stall, compressor stall. It's very sophisticated. Fuel control is an absolute work of art. And let's uh, bring the light around here to the power turbine. Power turbine looks like brand new. Sounds good, turns nice and free. Very nicely done, all TIG welded. And there's an inspection cover 
right on the uh, right on the exhaust casing. And it looks like the entire engine is mounted right on this flange at the back. It's got a nice cover for the uh, compressor entrance inlet. And the starter's over here. It's an air turbine starter. So it's in two sections. It has a control valve section. So there's a valve at the inlet here, electrically operated. And it has the nozzle guide vanes. And then the air turbine is right here. It, uh, there's the air exhaust. Air exhaust right there. And then it has a spline drive. So it turns nice and free. And it mounts uh, right on the engine. I'll put that on, I'll put it back together and mount it up in place on the engine so you can see how it fits there. There's lots of room to put an electric starter there as well. For the large space. This whole space here is free. There's a rear pad to mount the back of the starter. And then these uh, these wires mount on the back of that as well. Here's the starter in place on the engine. It's a start uh, air inlet with an electrical connection. And it just exhausts right here. And it drives with a V-band clamp goes here to drive the accessory gearbox right to the front. I'll give you some quick dimensions. The overall, overall length of the starter is approximately uh, 345 millimeters. The compressor inlet is approximately 330 with a center hub of roughly 180. The overall length it's approximately 1890 or thereabouts. And the exhaust inside dimensions are 455 by about 570. Looks like a pretty good engine. I've never run it, but I sure would like to. Just too many other things get in the way. Isotoff TV3117 turboshaft helicopter engine. Has two power turbines, not one.